Hey, what's up guys? Hope everybody's doing well and having a great day. In this video, we're going out to the Canary Islands. We're going to La Palma. We're going to look at the deformation process, the movement of the island since the volcanic activity began. I also want to show you guys an article I found from Penn State University regarding a collapse on La Palma that could generate a hypothetical mega tsunami. We're going to come back and take a look at that article here in just a moment. Also, I want to talk about the very long duration strong geomagnetic storm activity we had last night created some incredible auroras if you were up to see the incredible dancing lights in the sky it was a kp7 that is a very strong geomagnetic storm and it stemmed from this cme right here there were two cmes one larger one swept up the the one that was in front of it interacting with the earth right there moved in very quickly the main cme was moving at around 2.6 million miles per hour. Here's a photo I received from Derek M. at a River Falls, Wisconsin from last night around 2.50 a.m. You can see some green and red lights visible from Wisconsin during the very strong geomagnetic storm. If you guys have any photos of the northern lights, you can send those to reports at MrMBB333.com and I'll definitely share them in my next video. Quick look at the Schumann residence. You can see a little bit of background noise, but nothing major, no major spikes in the last several days. Hopping over to the Yellowstone Supervolcano Caldera, looking at the seismographs and monitor the, the mighty supervolcano. You can see a little bit of earthquake activity up here at Mammoth Vault and over here at Soda Butte. That would be on the far northern edge of Yellowstone Lake. A little bit of magma intrusion like we see over here pretty much now on a daily basis. That would be the dark blue. But other than that, nothing major going on at the supervolcano Caldera. I want to take you guys now out to the Canary Islands. I've been following the National Institute of Geography out of Spain. These are geologists that are following pretty much every aspect of this volcanic eruption. The seismicity, the deformation process, the lava flow, and then of course the, the amount of earthquakes. And I want to show you guys some of the information that I found useful at that website. Here's a look at the island and here's the most recent earthquakes involving the earthquake swarm that is slowing down. According to this map right here, left to right, left is when the earthquake swarm started and you can see it peaked and the peak is now slowly coming down all the way over here to the far right of the graph. You can see the earthquake activity is definitely showing a decrease instead of an increase. However, that could change any minute, but right now the earthquakes are showing a downward trend. I want to talk about the deformation process of the island itself involving the volcanic eruption. And that means a change in the sea level of the island itself could be higher or lower in certain places during this volcanic eruption. And sure enough, according to this map right here, if I'm reading it correctly, it's showing that the northern end of the island has changed by a value of 20 centimeters since the eruption began back in September. That would be this orange area here. The green represents no change. Down here, this light blue in the far southwestern section of the island shows a moderate decrease in the overall sea level height, which is kind of weird. So basically what this map is showing is that there is a deformation process underway, but it's not extreme at the moment. But as of right now, it's showing a 20 centimeter, that would be between seven and eight inches of change since all of this began back in September, and that's primarily on the northern end of the island. I want to take you guys now to an article I found, an educational article from Penn State University regarding the Canary Island landslides and potential mega tsunami. They've got an aerial view of Cumbre Veja. This is a side view of the island, and they have a note down here saying these are not cliffs that are predicted to fail if there were some sort of a collapse on the island of La Palma. It would not be these right here. They go on to say, it's a lengthy article, you can read it down below in the description box if you like. Goes on to say the hypothesis that the Canary Island collapse generates a mega tsunami is not universally accepted. The skepticism arises from the fact that the island collapse may not have been catastrophic, instead occurring slowly in numerous discrete small events events rather than a single giant collapse. Such a slow collapse would not generate 
a large tsunami. And that's just what they say here at an article from Penn State University. I know there's a lot of stuff going around about a large mega tsunami, and I haven't been able to find anything from a credible source that indicates that. But again, that's just what I found. You guys are more than welcome to, of course, find your own sources of information. This is a good one here. These are the geologists that, again, are monitoring every step of this volcanic eruption and all of the earthquakes and, and the deformation process. And you can find this link down below in the description box. This is a very good source of information. And it's also implying that the earthquakes are slowing down, at least right now while we're doing the video. This could all change within the next hour. But right now, the numbers are showing not only a decrease in the volcanic output of the eruption, but a decrease in earthquake activity as well. Also in this video, I've got a brand new picture slideshow, new sky phenomenon photos sent in from all around the world. First photo out of Belgium sent in by Chris V of a unique cloud in the sky with a colorful rainbow in the center, much like this one here out of California, sent in by Levi. They almost look like identical clouds in different hemispheres of planet Earth. Adam A out of South Carolina, very unique view of the sun. Ominous looking clouds here by AB out of Ghana, very low to the ground shelf cloud photogenic sky that compelled him to take multiple photos of this very unique sky. He said they don't see that very often. Amber from right out here in Arizona, very unique lenticular clouds. Justin out of New South Wales, Australia, about as pink of a sky as you can get, covering a very intense double-decker rainbow. That is unedited exactly the way I received it. Lena M, photo from out above the Irish sea of a giant orange ominous looking cloud with yet another double decker rainbow right there in front of her laura out of the uk colorful moon at least colorful clouds in the proximity of the moon some that look like louvers over there and once again if you guys have any photos of last night's northern lights from the very strong geomagnetic storm you can send those to reports at mr mbb 333.com thanks for watching have a super day and be safe out there